that lipids are substances, compounds that are insoluble in polar solvents, right? Because water is a polar solvent. Then they are soluble in what? Non-polar solvents. Like what? Benzene. Ether and what? Chloroform. So does it mean that anything we put in water that is not soluble, that is not miscible, miscible with water, is lipid? So there are other things that are, not insol that, that are insoluble in water but are not lipids. Alright, so generally, that is the general definition of lipids. But in this topic, we are going to look at lipids in depth. So we are going to classify lipids, the different types of lipids, and every other thing we need to know about lipids. But for now, just know that lipids are compounds that are insoluble in what? water, but soluble in non-polar solvents like benzene, ether, and chloroform. Right? Now, the functions of lipid. The functions of lipid, number one, we say is what? It serves as fair reserve of the body. This fair reserve we are talking about is not the petrol from your filling station. Fair reserve of the body. What is the main source of energy for the body? Among the classes of food, which one is the main? Carbohydrate, right? Because if you take in food, please listen up. Let's assume this is my, sorry, this is your intestine because my own cannot be like this. All right, so let's assume this is your intestine. Your mouth is somewhere here. You take in food, passes through your bullet or esophagus to so your stomach, right? And digestion ends where? In the small intestine. Then as digestion ends in the small intestine, the nutrient is absorbed into the bloodstream. Good. Now, if it is carbohydrates, the end product of carbohydrate digestion, which is monosaccharides, will be absorbed into your blood, right? Like glucose will be absorbed into the blood. And that glucose can be broken down to release energy in the form of ATP, right? Good. But now, if you don't have carbohydrates in your body, if there is no carbohydrates, will you die immediately? You will not die, right? Your body will look for another means to get energy. So since carbohydrates are making younger, let's look for another way to get energy. Do you get that? And that is when they will go to fats, lipids. And they will now break down fats into smaller smaller units to release energy we we'll look at the steps in breaking down the fats to release energy but for now just know that fats they serve as free reserve they are stored just in case carbohydrates is not there to give us energy we we'll now go and source of fats right to get energy do you understand that so fats lipids serve as free reserve of the body that is storage form of energy for the body they, they don't serve as immediate use. You know, the brain depends mainly on glucose, right? The brain cannot get energy from lipids. Do you know that? Even at that, there are some parts of the body that cannot get energy from lipids. Something like the brain, erythrocyte, red blood cells, they must get energy from glucose. But generally, lipids serve as what? Fire reserve for the body. Please don't cram. Understand so you can give them anyone they want. The second one, they, they, they said the second one is what? Structural components of what? Cell membrane. Now the lipid, lipids serve as structural components of cell membrane. As you're sitting down here, are you eukaryotic or you're prokaryotic? Sp speak for yourself, please. You're what? Yeah, you eukaryotic, right? Good. Are you unicellular or multicellular? You are multicellular. Good. Means you have cells all over, right? Good. Now let's pick one of the cells. You know, this cause uh, the cell is a topic on its own. We are going to treat that. But for now, let's look at this. This cell have two parts. This open space where other organelles are dispersed, and the nucleus, right? But now, just imagine there is nothing surrounding this cell. You just be sitting there one day and your mitochondria is coming out, your endoplasmic reticulum is coming out because there's nothing like a fence surrounding it. Now, this thing, this thing that serves as a fence surrounding it is called the what? Cell membrane, right? Cell membrane, or you call it the plasma membrane. We'll look at it in details when we get to that topic. Now, this cell membrane regulates what comes in or goes out of the cell. Do we get that? 
it controls what is coming in or what is going out of the cell. Now, the cell membrane looks like this. This is how the cell membrane looks like, just like this. And this cell membrane, this is lipid bilayer. So you can see that this cell membrane is composed of what? Lipids, right? So the lipid here serves as the structural component of this cell membrane. That's what we are saying here. That lipid serves as structural components of the cell membrane. That's one function of lipid. So just imagine you without lipid. It means there's no cell. Because plant cells, they have cell membrane. Animal cells also have cell membrane. And lipid is the major component of the cell membrane. So if cell membrane is not there, where is the cell? Do we get that? So, another function of lipid is structural components of cell membrane. Please pay attention and ask questions where you don't understand because I'll ask the questions and I'll point. Alright, so the next one is absorption of what? Are we together? Absorption of what? Absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. Now, vitamins are classified into two. Water-soluble vitamins and what? Fat-soluble vitamins. And you're told that fat soluble vitamins are vitamin A, D, E, and what? K, ADEC. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. This is a topic. Vitamin is a topic. Think two things, right? We'll look at that there. So, A, D, E, and K. Now, when they say fat soluble vitamin, that means they cannot dissolve in water, right? And if they cannot dissolve in water, how many of you have seen palm oil before? Not in picture, in real life. <laughs> Alright, if you've seen palm oil before, if you pour it on water, what will happen? Think it will dissolve in water. No. It will not dissolve in water, it will just be floating. Yeah. Now, take the fat-soluble vitamin as that palm oil. Then take your blood as that water. Fat-soluble vitamins cannot dissolve in the blood. They will just be floating there, so they cannot be transported. They are only dissolved, they are only transported by what? Lipids, fats. So, fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, are only transported by lipids. That is why we said absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So lipid helps in absorbing the fat-soluble vitamins since they cannot dissolve in water. And as they absorb them, they will help in transporting them to where they are needed in the body. Do you understand that? So without lipid itself, vitamin A, D, E, and K will be helpless. They will just, they are nothing to transport them, nothing to uh, absorb them because they are not, they are insoluble in water. Do we get if you forget anything we've said today, don't forget that you say lipids are substances that are what? Insoluble in what? Water, but soluble in what? Non-polar solvents, like what? Benzene, ether, and what? Chloroform. Good. Now, do we understand this now? The third one, the fourth one, we said they are what? Insulation in what? I'm not getting you. They provide insulation against changes in external temperature. That's one thing that lipid does. It provides insulation. So it provides insulation. What's insulation? What's insulation? How many of you, what, first, what's the difference between fat and oil? What's the difference? Say, fat is solid oil, right? Oil is liquid fat, is it not? And that's it now. That's it. Fat is the solid one. Oil is the liquid. Now, when we talk about insulation of the body, these fats are found in the subcutaneous cells, just under your skin. The fats are found just below your skin. And if there is any change in external temperature, the fat layers, we call them adipose tissues, they can regulate the, the changes in external temperature. So, these uh, lipids serve as insulators in your body. And since I'm talking about insulation now, they also serve as electric insulators in neurons. What is the function of neuron? Neuron is involved in what? Relaying information, right? From, your body, from different parts of your body to the brain, and from your brain to different parts of your body. That's why we have motor neurons, and what? And sensory neurons, right? Afferent and efferent. 
Good. Now, so uh, the, the lipids are also involved in serving as electric insulators in neurons. So that's that. So we've talked about this, 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 and this. Now, shape of the body. What do you see if you see somebody that is big? What do you see? The person is what? Uh -huh, the person is fat. Remember that fat you're mentioning is lipid, right? Good. So it gives shape. Lipid, one function of lipid is gives what? Shape to the body. So that's thing you're seeing is just fat, lipid. Lipid. So that's what gives shape. To, that does not mean I don't have fat, please. All right. So, so it gives shape to the body. Now, cushioning what? Effects. By what? I, I said something before I said cushioning effects. What did I say there? Protect internal organs. How many if you are swat if you if you're killing uh goats, there are some organs that you see fat layer. In fact, if you are going to buy meat, you say give me fat suya, you say give me fat. That fat there, the fat layer there, what is doing is is serving a cushioning effect, protecting internal organs. So it's so it's so surrounds some internal organs, protecting them from harm, from external harm. That's cushioning effect. Then the seventh one we say it does what? Improve taste and palatability of food. How many of you cook soup without oil? Yeah, like your normal soup without oil. Or you cook rice or beans without oil. Remember the oil we are talking about is lipid, right? The fat we are talking about is a lipid. So lip, uh, the lipid, the fat, the oil we put in our food gives what? Taste and palatability. Makes it palatable, makes it... If we, in fact, some of you, you are so selective that if the oil is not... You are not really seeing the, the, red, the redness of the food. You say, no, you're not eat. So it improves the taste and palatability of food. But have you ever asked yourself, how is lipid able to do that? How is it able to improve the taste of food? You don't know, you only so eat. Eh? All right, so any questions so far from the functions, from the meaning of lipids and the functions of lipids? Any questions so far? Before I ask mine. Yes. Uh, 